Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Chiseled. And why do we call it Chiseled? Because we're all a work in progress. I'm Rob Kamadari. I'm your host. I'm also the author of Better Than You Think. And today I have a guest, Rob Taylor Jr., who I met seven or eight years ago when my da daughter was attending high school at Maryvale Prep in Baltimore, Maryland. Rob was born in Jersey and raised in Pennsylvania. He is a, a physical trainer. He's got a, called a gym. Fair enough. Yeah. And well, he's, he's performance center. Yeah. Performance center. He's worked with the uh, he's worked with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, yeah. and he's consulted on numerous other uh, major league sports teams. So, Rob, welcome to the show today. How you doing, man? I appreciate the uh, opportunity. We, I know we talked about doing this for a while, so to finally get on the uh, on the show here is an honor, buddy. Yeah, thank you for being here because Rob has just a, an incredible story to share, and it, uh, if you got some tissues, you might want to have them nearby. <laughs> I got many so, stories, many stories. And, and, he's, and he's got a, such a humor long to go with it. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's hard to laugh when you almost die. But anyway, yeah. <laughs> Rob, if, if, please, if you would share a little bit of, of your story, uh, how you got to where you are and what happened. And, and we'll, we'll chat along the way and, and shoot some questions at you. No problem, man. Well, first of all, thank you very much for your uh, your friendship, uh, for being an, an amazing dad, uh, raising a very cool family. Um, it's, been, it's been an honor and a privilege to... Uh, to know you and your family for the last seven or eight years. Mm -hmm. So to, uh, to share this story is more therapy. So yes, there, there'll be times where I'll be emotional. Uh, you're, you are correct. I, I am an owner of a high performance facility. Uh, I take people to the physical max uh, from Olympians all the way down to, you know, seven, eight year olds. Uh, so I run the gamut of physical fitness. Uh, I, I've, I have awards throughout my career. I've helped written books, uh, DVDs. I presented all over the world over over 200 times. Um, I, I'm very, very fortunate in the, in the fitness world. And uh, at 2.35 a.m. one night, um, I get up just to go to the bathroom and pee like everybody else does. That's over the age of 40 probably. And I uh, <laughs> thought nothing of it. And I uh, go to wash my hands. And uh, I felt like an electric shock go through my body. And uh, I didn't know what it honestly was. Uh, I, I describe it as a, a singular 18-wheeler hit my chest and went down my right arm. And uh, I didn't really know what it was. So I <clears throat> walked into the uh, bedroom. And at the time, the, it was kind of like during a COVID time. So uh, Chrissy was in the guest room and uh, I, the wife was in the guest room and, and I was in the bedroom. And I had my arm on the, uh, I put my arm, my right arm on the bed and I kind of stretched. And I thought I pulled a muscle, to be honest with you. I didn't know what it was. And I said, hey, Chris, can you come here for a minute? And uh, as she was coming from the guest room, which is only down the hallway, a few steps, maybe, maybe 10, 11 steps. Uh, somehow I, I, the only way I can describe it, it felt like a highway of 18 wheelers through, went through my chest and, uh, somehow I got thrown on the floor. I'm, I'm 240 pounds. Uh, I, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm not normally knocked on my rear end, uh, <laughs> with the, with the life I've grown up with through, through sports and, and other activities. Uh, so it was very unusual for me to be on my back. And, uh, uh, Chrissy, who is a nurse, uh, actually, uh, said, um, I, I think we should call your, uh, your, your, my, one of my good friends, who's a doctor who's super even keeled. And, uh, she goes, uh, Hey doc, Dr. Jeff, what, what, uh, what do you think it could be? And he goes, uh, I think you're, you think your uh, husband's having a heart attack. And I was like, there's no way in the world I'm having a heart attack. I'm telling you, Rob, when this guy, I, I've known Dr. Jeff for probably 15, 18 years. And uh, he's as even keeled as it comes. Like he does he never gets too excited to uh, the words he used in that phone call to get me off that ground. <clears throat> Obviously. Uh, made, it, made it made it very clear that it was serious. Quick, mm. so, <clears throat> to the grown men who are too stubborn to go get their heart checked, it's called a calcium score. If you go get your annual physical, you can go get a, what's called a calcium score. Uh, you can find it if you have anything built up in your uh, uh, your veins, arteries, anything in your vascular system there, and and you can find out where you are as far as a blockage goes. And that's now, not the same as plaque, right? The calcium and plaque. Uh, uh, it's similar. It's similar because it'll, it'll tell you if you have any type of, um, uh, or, or if you have, if you're a higher chance of being blocked, okay. um, which I did not have at the time. I didn't even know that it, that it existed to be fair with you. Um, uh, so I didn't know that that even existed. Now, now if I can preface this, the, this, this was on a, on, on 12, one 21. So you can do that forward or backwards. It's very easy for, for me to remember 12, one 21. Um, the Saturday before that, excuse me, the, the, the Thursday before that was Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving morning, I went out and I went hunting. I, I killed two deer, drug them out of the woods, 
took them to the processor. I came home. I cut my own firewood with an ax. We spat cocked a turkey, which is incredible. If anyone's not ever done that, you should try to do it. It's a great way of doing it. We cooked it over an open fire. The next morning, as you are aware now, I, I move 100-pound plates for a living. And uh, on really, really tough days, we move 45s or 25s. I had no problem that on that day. But some reason, Monday going into Tuesday morning, my body said that it had enough. And uh, we went through this process. So 2.35 a.m., I hit the floor. Uh, somehow, uh, I I'm, I'm remain uh, conscious. I basically had a cardiac event for 45 minutes. Throughout the course of the experience, I can tell you all the scary parts, which everybody here can imagine, uh, and, and I probably won't make it through it. I'll try to tell you some of the funny parts, which you and I discussed. <laughs> I barely make it through all of that, to be honest with you. So here we go with this roller coaster. Uh, so, um, I literally put on a pair of pants that I took off and it was in a hamper. It was laying next to me and I, and I put them on. I put my shoes on and I grabbed a t-shirt out of the hamper, out of, out of the, out of the uh, um, dresser there. Chrissy makes fun of me because she's like, you took Lauren to get dressed then and when we go on a date. And I was, and I'm thinking to myself, I don't know what is going on right now. So I was kind of like confused, what, what you know, how to react, what do you do? What, if, if you had to drop right now and go to the hospital, what do you wear? I don't know. Like, I, I, I <laughs> let alone, let alone you think about your life flashing before, before your eyes. You don't know if you're going to make it out the door, or if you're going to make it back home. Um, so you're having this thought in your mind and you're deciding on what to wear to get to the hospital. That, that was kind of what Chrissy was telling me. I'm telling <laughs> you what, in my head, I was going fast. In her mind, we weren't going fast enough. Wow. Um, so I, I couldn't stand up. There's a lot of pressure uh, in your chest, uh, obviously down my right arm. And it was very weird because it was, it, I, I was always told that if you're having a heart attack or a heart event, cardiac event, it's going down your left side. And that's when you have to pay attention. So I was in complete denial. And I was like, no way. But I couldn't open my chest. Like, I, I couldn't stand up. <clears throat> so we walk out the front door. Long story short, anyways, I come in here, put my shoes on, in, into, my, into our great room where I am now. And uh, my daughter had already woken up, heard the disturbance or whatever, and she was trying to check to see if I was okay. Mom told her to go out in the living room and lay down because we didn't know what we were going to do yet. Uh, we, you know, we, we didn't get to hold a doc, whatever. And uh, so she actually was kind of like dozing off, falling asleep. So uh, <clears throat> I uh, was putting my shoes on. And uh, she gives me a hug and says, Whatever it is, you'll beat it. You always win. Um, I told you this would be therapy. Take, take your time, brother. Take your time. I, honestly, I have no shame in crying because if it's uh, anybody that gets a chance to realize, uh, that's a, that tomorrow is not guaranteed. Wow. Um, it's shook a little bit. So walking out that door, you're like, I don't know if I'm yeah. coming back. Yeah. I mean, we're, we're two years removed. <laughs> this is this is still me. Okay. <laughs> oh, I hug her, you know, do the things dad do. I'll be back. Tell her whatever I got to tell her. I'll be like, get out the door. You know, not knowing if you're telling her the truth or, or that's the last time you're going to say bye. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> We get out the door. Chrissy drives a uh, a, uh, a Ford Edge. For those of you that don't know, that's a smaller type car. I drive a Raptor. <laughs> Chrissy doesn't like driving the truck. The truck, I could have laid down. I could have kicked my feet up. I could have been comfortable in a very nice leather seat. <laughs> Instead, she wants to put me in the passenger side of her Edge. So, in the Edge, <laughs> again, I can't open, <laughs> open my chest. I'm stuck <laughs> In the very front, <laughs> where your feet go, <laughs> all the way down. My butt is literally on the floor, <laughs> and I'm in this like, like fetal position. Like, oh my god, the pain feels like, like, uh, and I'm not understating this. It feels like a gorilla jumping on your chest while, uh, like, someone, a big strong man, is like, tr like, tr like twisting your chest at the same time. It's kind of mm -hmm. crazy feeling. But you definitely know something's wrong. You, you, it's it's an obvious, like, I'm not supposed to be here right now. Something, I, I, I got to go get help. So anyways, in our mind, we were going to go downtown. I live in, I live uh, basically on the PA line of the top of 83. And uh, we were going to drive down to Maryland. Uh, that was down to Baltimore where the hospitals were, St. Joe's in particular, because they have a very good cardiac unit. Well, we get on the Middletown Road here. And uh, I'm, I'm not in a good position. I'm not, I don't feel good. And uh, Chrissy goes, uh, 
hey, by the way, I can't see out the dash. I'm, I'm stuck. I'm, I'm literally in the field position in the front of the seat. And, and uh, Chrissy goes, I'm going to pass this 18 wheeler. Cause you know, we're, we're, we're having a problem. We're, we're in trouble. <clears throat> and for some reason, I kind of, let's call it sobered up very quickly. Cause she'll tell you the story verbatim, Rob, if you ever want to go have a <laughs> dinner and we'll talk about it. She goes, uh, you sobered up like instantly. Like, if there was no pain and you were like, I don't want to die passing an 18 wheeler. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, I'm dying in the front seat of her car <laughs> doing 25 miles an hour. And all she can think about is get to the hospital. And I'm concerned about her driving skills on a back road. Okay. So we get to the other end. <laughs> Excuse me. The funny, the ironic part is whoever upstairs is listening, because I know you're a religious man. So I'm going to say God's paying attention to what the heck's going on at the moment. And uh, the next a bit, a, a opportunity for that tractor trailer to turn left and get out of our way. It turns left and gets out of her way. She's able to speed down the road a little bit. She makes a decision. Uh, not I was not coherent enough to, to make a decision. She makes the decision to call uh, the local fire department, which is right before getting on 83 to come down, which we've done a bunch of um, uh, like fundraiser type four. We've dropped off food and, and supported them uh, through different events that we've done. Well, she actually calls the calls the line to get in that, that we had on her phone, and it actually turns to be the, out to be the chief of the station. And he goes, I completely remember who you guys are. I'll have the ambulance ready. Wow. So she pulls in and uh, she'll she'll tell you stories about uh, there were signs, signs all over the place. Apparently we drove in. Um, again, this is this is during hunting season. And apparently when we drove into the uh, like through the parking lot area into the fire station, there was apparently an eight point buck in the parking lot. She's like, <laughs> I knew you'd be OK because we saw a buck. I'm like, I'm myself. <laughs> your version of this story very different than mine so anyways they uh two two grown men picked me up put me on a gurney put me in, into the ambulance and uh as i'm sitting in the ambulance they're wiring me up uh the, 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 the late there's a lady that uh super mellow dry sense of humor uh basically the one that pretty much saved you know brought me back to life saved me saved me from the, from from disaster at that point um she puts me uh, on the uh ekg I believe for those that know it, I believe it's called a five lead EKG. Um, long story short, uh, I hear my heart start beeping in the, uh, in the ambulance. Like most people can recognize that. And uh, I'm trying to find out what's going on. I'm kind of in and out. I never really lost consciousness, but I, I'm kind of in and out. And uh, they're trying to figure out where they're going to take me. Uh, the, the, for the people who don't know, and I did not know this at the time, if uh, you, me, or anybody else ever gets in a situation like this, you have to get in an ambulance. If Chrissy jumps on 83 and drives south, and it takes us about 25 minutes, maybe 30 minutes to get from here to the hospital, if she goes down there and I have a cardiac event, she cannot drive and give me CPR at the same time. Wow. I'm a dead man in the passenger seat. Yeah. So her getting in the ambulance, not only do they have the tools to keep you alive relatively, um, but they can also call ahead and find out uh, which hospital is uh, is open. The house, the, the hospital that we were going to go to, St. Joe's, actually had a full booked ER. They called up to York, which is the same distance from the from the from the fire station. They had just cleared out their emergency room. I was the first person in there. Wow! So they make a decision to go right in there, and I remember I can tell you this vividly. She was like, "Hey, we're we're going to go to York." Uh, so <clears throat> we're sitting there, and they're still. It, to, in my opinion, they were taking their time. But again, it, because time is now altered because of who I am and, and the situation I'm in, I'm like, let's go. And, and Rob, you know, I have call, call for language, so I'm sure it was a eventful <laughs> uh, moment in that, in that period of time. Um, <laughs> that uh, we will we will leave for a G-rated show. <laughs> but it, okay, I'm, I'm pretty sure my point was made clear. Anyways, while we're sitting there in the fire station, <clears throat> I heard my heart flatline. Electrical signal to my front side of my uh, heart actually stopped. And uh, my, my heart stopped beating. They were instantly able to inject uh, morphine in one arm and uh, uh, adrenaline in another. And luckily, without pads, my heart kicked back in and, and decided to beat. And they were able to keep me um, alive uh, and, and conscious for the ride from um, basically <clears throat> Middletown, where Middletown Road in 83 meets up to York Road and get into the hospital. Uh, that ro- that, that uh, I can tell you every bump. I can tell you every time that uh, ambulance slowed down between here and there, and uh, I think it was the fastest trip. And by the way, I got a heavy foot. I think that was the fastest trip I've ever gone between my house and York. Uh, that ambulance driver was a rocket ship, and I don't know how because Chrissy follows me quite a bit on this edge, 
and she can't keep up with the Raptor, but she was right behind because I was <laughs> looking out the back. If no one knows what an ambulance is, you're looking out the back the whole time, and I could see the car. Um, but anyways, we pull up to the uh, – Hey, Rob, if I can interrupt you real quick. So you heard it flatline in the ambulance. I had the paperwork. And I, then so I, yep. was there was there a moment of unconsciousness there? Like did you? Nope. I, they, they, were, they were actually prepping me to, in case that happened, apparently. And so as soon as it happened, uh, I did I, – I, I, I can't speak for anybody else other than my experience. So right. I almost kind of felt na- nauseous and excitement at the same time. It was weird. The body was trying to keep you like, alive. Right. And, uh, my, you can, and I, we can, well, I'll, I have no problem ever calling the analyst people because I've done so many thank yous with them. It's ridiculous. <laughs> um, and, and rightfully so. And, and well-earned, uh, they, they, they were like, they, they're just talking to you, trying to keep you conscious. Yeah. Uh, they were very, they're very shocked that I never got elevated as far as uh, nervous that I was going to die to that night was not going to be my night. Yeah. Uh, you, you're well aware of my personality. Uh, I I'm going to go out with something way more eventful than go to me on a Tuesday night. <laughs> um, so, I mean, that, that's, that's hilarious. So anyways, we pull up to the ER and uh, um, they, they, they wheel me through. I can, I can remember them wheeling me through and there's nobody in there. There's nobody in the waiting room. There's nobody in the, well, the hallways. There's nobody... And all of a sudden they bang me into this room and there's eight ladies. And what turns out to be is one gentleman sitting down. <laughs> now, if you don't mind me being playful on the sense of humor here with me, <clears throat> mind you Go that I was it. medicated and, uh, and in a life or death, more of a death type situation. Uh, I said about time. And I knew I'd go out this way. Eight <laughs> women ready to tear my clothes off. <laughs> <laughs> ha! While, I, you're di- while you're in the process of maybe dying, right? Yes. Because the uh, the wife is sitting literally right behind me, <laughs> filling out insurance paperwork, just laughing like like hysterically laughing. She said, as soon as I could get the room laughing, she knew I'd be okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, there. Uh, as soon as that occurs, they obviously cut. I mean, I, I uh, Bryn, my daughter, still has my shirt that was got cut off. They don't jerk around when you're going there. By the way, as I already told you that. The funny part of this is me trying to pick out which jeans I'm taking. In about seven seconds, they take the sharpest shears ever, and they go from your right leg all the way up your pants seam, all the way through your belt, all the way up to your T-shirt, and they literally tear the, your clothes off and pull it out from underneath you. You are you are completely naked uh, in in less than ten seconds. It's incredible. And then they and then they give you this little like what looks like a tablecloth with like a, this little dinky rope like rope thing, and they lay it on top of you. Like that's now gonna. I'm dying. Do you think I care it, what I look like with some designer uh, wraparound? Thing? I don't give a crap at this point. I mean, crazy. Um, at least it wasn't a white cloth at the time, right? <laughs> yeah, crap. Like, or a black body bag, whatever. Anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. So uh, they start doing what they do. They obviously shave the, 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 your chest, down your right leg. Uh, they, shave, they shave my right arm in this case, uh, trying to get ready for uh, going into the cath lab to, to, to find out what's going on. Um, the other part that's cool about an, an ambulance, again, I, I didn't know this at the time, and I, and I wanted to share this, is they can send what your heart is doing, what your body is doing, your vitals are doing, to the ER that you're going to from the ambulance. Really? If wow. I jump in a car with you, Rob, and I'm, we're in an oh-crap situation, and we go, you you can't communicate all this information until you get there. They're not even ready. So in this case, the ambulance is making sure that the ER is prepped for you when you show up. They're, they already got a game plan. They know what's going on. They got the docs involved. They, everyone's already on site, all man on deck, everyone in the huddle ready for you to get there. That's amazing. Um, me being the QB, I just arrived late, a little late to the huddle, and now I got to throw the play down and the shot and the, and the game clock's running down. You know what I mean? You got to you gotta kick the play off with five seconds to go. We, there's no time for an audible. <laughs> so I'm laying there on the thing. At this point, they've given me some medication and stuff to try to calm me down, probably morphine or whatever else. To, to, to And I'm, I'm telling you, Chrissy makes fun of me that the noises I was making apparently it that the pain and stress in my chest was incredible. And I'm not a wimpy kind of guy. Um, she goes, uh, uh, I remember the lady saying, uh, you know, what's your pain? What's your pain? Like out of a uh, one out of 10, sir, like saying it real calmly. And I'm like, how about a 53? Like, I mean, <laughs> we're not a 10. It doesn't even start. Like, are you kidding? I wouldn't be here if it was a 10. That's yeah. how, I mean, like, it's, it's, we're in a bad situation. Um, so anyways, I'll give you a couple other funny stories. Cause that's the way I'm going to get through this. Uh, 
Um, we we have a, a very uh, a big safe here at the house. Uh, I'm hopefully a lot of people do invent uh, something ever happened to the house, whether it burned down or someone snuck in or or whatever. And uh, you know your your personal stuff is in the safe. Well, Chrissy leans over to me and goes, "Hey, what's the combination?" <laughs> and, and I go, "Why do you need the combination?" She goes, "Well, if you die, I'm like, who's dying? <laughs> who's dying in here? <laughs> I'll be there. I'll go. I said I'll meet you for breakfast tomorrow morning." <laughs> this, is what, this is what's going through my head. Medicated, and my heart stopped already that night. My, I'm telling you that I am not quitting on life. Okay. <laughs> well, so till so, so this day, she she's like we everyone in the room was like laughing like crazy. So, uh, anyways, fast forward a couple minutes, maybe three, four, five minutes. I think within seven minutes of me being in the ER, I think she, I think it was seven or twelve. I mean, but it, me, but it, me being in the ER, I was in the cath lab. At this point, they've already drugged me up a little bit, so I'm starting to go in and out. I remember going to cath lab, lots of screens being on my left, a lady being at my feet, another lady being at my right knee, and it, apparently an anesthesiologist over top of my face. And uh, they kept putting their, you know, the, the like the gas mask on, basically, whatever, just to, to breathe right. through the out. Well, the lady to my right, who is now I found out is my cardiologist, said, uh, hope to see you on the other side. <laughs> well, apparently I grabbed the mask off my face and said, what do you mean hope? I'll be there. You better be there too. And I went out. Next morning, I wake up in the ICU. <laughs> different, different schmock on, different schmock on, different environment, no cell phone, no wallet, no nothing. Uh, no clue where I am, but I could hear my heart beating. You didn't think you were in heaven or dead, did you? Okay, so let's talk about that. So uh, Bryn's, <laughs> version, Bryn's version of this story, my daughter, remind you, remind you at the time she's seven years old. Okay, fast forward, we, we'll jump a little bit ahead and then we'll come back. That's fine. Uh, I spend about 10 days in the, uh, in the ICU and the observatory and that type of stuff. We can talk about some of those funny stories and, uh, I get a chance to come back home. Okay. Uh, I won't tell you about the emotional stuff when we get home until we get there, but I'm going to fast forward cause it's kind of funny. So uh, again, you asked me about being spiritual and those types of things. Well, here's, here's my, here's my daughter's, uh, um, explanation of this show uh, or this, uh, this, uh, experience. Okay. She goes, uh, uh, in, in a very seven year old way, you know, she's trying to justify this in her head. She's going to process this. Right. And, and we all went through, uh, a lot of talking, um, to, to try to recover from, from, uh, seeing someone almost going to die in your, in your house. Okay. Um, she goes, uh, dad, I know, I know exactly what happened. She's talking to me as frankly as you and I are talking right now, Rob. She goes, dad, you went up to heaven and uh, God was busy doing good things. <laughs> and, he, and he told you to wait. And you're not a very patient person. So you jumped out of that, that, that you, you jumped right out of his office and you went down to the bottom and you met the devil. And he said, uh, sheesh, you're too scary. I'm going to send you home. <laughs> so here you are. You're back. You met God, you met the devil. So you're, you're where you're supposed to be. <laughs> That's a seven-year-old. That's crazy. Story that about is crazy. That. Isn't that crazy? It's, it's crazy. There's a chance. There is a chance that God knew I had other things to do. <laughs> and he sent me back here. I know there's a fact that the devil thinks I'm too scary and he ain't keeping me down there. So that's I, good news. I, that's good news. I, I don't know why I'm here. Hopefully we'll figure that out, but I am here. So, uh, you wake up in the ICU, uh, your chest is shaved, your arm shaved. I did have some different, different discomfort and pain, uh, that wasn't uh, necessarily attributed to the heart attack, but uh, the them actually going in with the stints, uh, pericarditis, it's a sac around your heart that gets inflamed, and uh, there's some medications and stuff like that, that that can help you with that type of stuff. So, uh, if anybody is listening to the show and this ever happened to you, that that is kind of uh, well, I'll use the word normal, kind of predict that uh, it might might go down one of your shoulder pains, and it's probably worse. It probably feels worse than the. Uh, the heart attack itself, to be honest, that, that, that is a very unique and uh, not comfortable uh, sensation that, that way too many medications can, uh, can subside and help uh, alleviate, but it, but it takes a while for that to happen. Um, so you just got to give it a, you just got to be patient with it, the medication getting in. And then when, as soon as that calms down, then you can actually sleep, which is what your body needs most at that point. Um, so, <clears throat> Uh, I spent uh, basically three days in the ICU. ICU is you laying on your back, people coming in and doing pretty much everything that, that you need to do uh, to to just maintain some type of human standard, essentially. Uh, I do realize now that um, 
the amount of money that a heart attack costs, I don't understand why they only have 22 inch televisions uh, in the hospital rooms. I do find that very funny. Uh, I'm like, you guys can't go to Walmart and just pick up like a 52 inch on sale, like Black Friday, maybe just stick on this wall. I mean, why am I looking at something the size of a computer screen? But those are the things that were going through my head, not really worrying about uh, what I was doing physically, because in, in my mind, I knew if I kept laughing, I kept people around me, and uh, and I kept believing in in, in them and their skill sets, uh, that I'd be okay. And and I I realized that uh, I was starting from the bottom a little bit as far as the uh, the physical recovery, uh, the mental recovery of that. Um, I didn't know how people would judge me afterwards. To be honest with you, again, I work in the physical fitness world. Uh, my my job is to help people get fit. Uh, I, have, I have degrees and certifications in uh, fitness. Uh, so talking to somebody who is a strength and conditioning coach, telling you to rump it down the field and get faster and, and work harder and whatever else. Uh, and then they look at you and you go, but you had a heart attack. So what do you know? And I'm like, yeah, hey, well, your little hamstring means nothing to me anymore. So when you tell me your pec is sore or your shoulders are sore or you can't feel your lungs or the ultimate, like you're killing me. Nah, I'm the only guy that's been there on that road, buddy. So, uh, I'll tell you right now, you're nowhere close to being right there. So, uh, Keep going. Three more reps sounds about right. And then we'll, we'll go about halfway there. So, uh, Hey Rob, if I can interrupt you again here. Good. So was there a point in time when you're in the hospital, whether in that three day time frame, like you said, your body needed sleep, right? Yeah. Were you afraid to go to sleep and not wake up? Uh, I don't, I don't know if that was ever the case. Uh, I, I was probably honestly, um, I'll, I'll be, I'll, I'll make it a joking scenario if you don't mind. I, I don't take vacations. <laughs> And that's probably one of the things that contribute to, you know, cardiac events and that type of stuff because I'm I'm always turned on kind of scenario. Uh, I kind of took advantage of sleep because it was like the only time I got a three week, three week vacation continuously in like my life. Now it was the most expensive vacation I've ever taken, (laughs) but I did have incredible customer service. Uh, I really never had to get out of bed. Like anybody was like, man, I've never didn't even have to get out of bed. Like they brought me breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Again, the only my only complaint could the TV be bigger? Uh, <laughs> the, the temperature was nice. I had a great view with the, you know the window looking outside. Um, so, uh, but as far as uh, going to sleep, no. Uh, I honestly, um, you know, now that we've looked back at this and had many conversations with Chrissy, and, and uh, uh, I always had like cold hands, probably like two years, maybe two and a half years, cold hands, cold feet for a long time, like like weird, like not like claiming cold, like I could literally touch it. And it was felt like they were they were cold. Um, but as soon as they cleared up that blockage and I could send it the video when they went through and opened up the two widow makers in my heart, uh, you could watch the, um, the TV screen of it, like opening up to like, uh, like what your GPS looks like in, in like zoomed in on your, like your town, your, your little, your little bitty area where you can see the roads. And then when they open up the second one, you can zoom it out you can see all of the roads in the entire America. Like it just went boom, like crazy. Wow. Uh, so when I was laying there in the hospital, I was like, holy crap, like my hands are sweating. Like my, like I, I, I didn't need socks. It was like, it was, it was weird, it was really weird to, uh, to know that, uh, blood is actually circulating through my body without being blocked. Again, I didn't know that you didn't know that you and I could have been out literally going for a jog and that happened. Uh, we could have been driving home from a basketball game or a soccer game. Uh, we didn't know when, we didn't know when that was going to occur. I didn't even know it existed in my body, you know, and, and. And there are many of us now that are walking around that don't know that we have a blockage. Um, I've had many of my, my clients now, they're 45 and above. I definitely suggest that they go get a calcium score. And many of them will come back knowing uh, or finding out that they do have uh, significant calcium in their system. Uh, and now they have to figure out a way to, to um, work through that work. Uh, you know, I don't want to use the word deal with that, but uh, you're, you're, you need, you, it, you're, your heart is a vital organ. Your brain is a vital organ. I mean, you, you can't, you know, you can you can do with one less kidney, but you can't do with one less heart. It doesn't work that way. Um, <laughs> you, you, know, one. <laughs> you only get one. I mean, uh, you, you can get it replaced uh, nowadays. Technology is incredible, uh, but I, I just don't know if you're the same person, um, you know, as far as your physical capabilities after that. Um, so I do, I do think, uh, you know, looking back hindsight, uh, I think that's something that we all need to do is, is do take care of a, a better care of ourselves, especially as stubborn males. Um, and I, and I, I know many of them, I can list them privately. Uh, um, and I'm sure you can, and I'm sure the guys listening to this or the, the wife that, or the mother or the, um, 
the female who's listening, I'm sure they know a bunch of stubborn males too. Uh, <laughs> go, you know, go get yourself checked, man. And it's not, uh, it's not too much to ask. And, and, and all of us can do a better job of, of doing that. Uh, we take, we take incredible care of our businesses. We take care of our, incredible care of our families, uh, incredible care of our spouses. Uh, we need to take incredible care of ourselves at times too. So, so you're sitting here today. You've been through that, and when this happened, and you said Thanksgiving, December first. You said December first, 12, 1, 21. 12, 21, right? And like, what, like going back, like you, you said it here. You said, I don't know why I'm supposed to be here, but I'm here. Yeah. What do you? Why do you think you're here? Um. Oh, yeah. Let's talk about that. Uh, so, a, a, a very good friend of mine um, is the uh, player development um, vice president for the Eagles, and uh, he had a stroke. And he's publicly said this, so I have no problem mentioning this a little bit. And uh, he called me up after he found out about all this stuff. And he goes, uh, I'm in the hospital, and I'm taking a phone call from the Eagles. <laughs> and I got, you know, I'm on, on, I make sure it's a FaceTime call. I don't take the FaceTime. I just take the audio side of it. And he's like, what are you doing? And I'm like, well, i got to be honest with you here. Uh, I'm actually in the hospital. I had a heart attack two days ago, and uh, I'm not doing really well. And he goes, well, do me a favor. He goes, uh. When I went through my stroke, the hardest thing for me to do was to come back and, and tell people about it. But telling people about it is what's going to help others uh, be aware of it. He goes, the, pl the platform that you have and the people that you're connected with, if you just talk about it, how do you know you don't save one father, one mm -hmm. son, let alone, you know, one player? So uh, instead of trying to keep it and suck it in, I tried to be as transparent as I possibly could be. Hmm. So from the time I was laying in the hospital from, uh, you know, there was a time, a two period, a, a two hour window where I, I fell asleep in a hospital. I'm in observation at this point. And, uh, excuse me. And I have, uh, I have my phone back at this point. <laughs> so I can communicate. <laughs> okay. Uh, there was a two hour window where I had no text messages, no emails, no voicemails. And I made it a point to respond to every single person who reached out to me. I fell asleep in two hours. I woke up with 754 <laughs> messages. That's amazing. <laughs> 754 people that really loved and cared for you. You know, 754, that could have been in my funeral. Yeah. And I get to tell them I love them. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure there were, there were times where they hated me for the workouts I put them to. <laughs> they, well, I like to say it this way, Rob. They for might sure. they've always loved you, but they might have not liked you. At that time. <laughs> they probably loved the championships, they hated the losses. You know what I mean? Right. Uh, yeah. um, but I, but I always ended it uh, every every interaction with "I love you" and, and "I will win," because I am a big believer that uh, you have to speak things out into the world. And then things will happen for you in a positive way. If you think negative thoughts, negative things will happen. Uh, it's very hard to think negative thoughts and positive things happen. That's a very, very tough thing to do. Okay. Uh, but if you stay positive, regardless of the, uh, regardless of how severe the situation is, um, even though sometimes it might not be realistic, but it keeps your mind thinking positive things. I think you're, there's a better chance, a better outcome. Um, I don't care if it's in sports and you're down eight, uh, down you know in lacrosse or down 25 in basketball. How do you know what's going to happen? You don't know what the future brings. You're not guaranteed tomorrow. You're not guaranteed the next bucket. You're not guaranteed the next goal. Uh, but if you, if you stick to your process, and my process has always been trying to be better tomorrow than I am yesterday. Uh, and when you go from laying on your bed and you can't move, Getting up and just walking around is a win. Yeah. Walking down the hall. Um, I will make, uh, I'll tell you another funny story just to try to catch my breath. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I got a couple questions for you, but go ahead. <laughs> so we go down to get uh, this. Um, I, I apologize. I forget what it's called right now. It was in my head a second ago. You go in this machine, it's circular, it's, it's magnetic. They're checking all you know, cat scan machine. Cat scan, yeah. Like going to get my cat scan and my chest and stuff. And, uh, um, I come back out and they had the uh, everywhere I'm walking at this point, I have a seven lead EKG and you got to hold it like this, uh, uh, like a, an advanced cell phone, like stuck to your hip. And uh, so the people who make these schmock things, if you could design some way 
to like, I don't know, you could put Velcro in it so you could slide these things into it. It would make it, I think you'd make a million dollars because I would have paid whatever it was. Because they wheel me back and then they can't get the bed from the hallway into your room for some reason <laughs> because your bed's in there and there's too much room, whatever. So I go to stand up and this thing falls out. So I just bend over to pick it up. Eight nurses, male and female, jump out from behind the counter thinking I'm passing out, falling on my face. And I literally pick it up and there's a full football team in front of me just staring at me. I'm like, what is going on? They're like, yo, we thought you fell, fell over. I was like, this is all it takes to get some like reaction from people. A second ago, I asked for a couple of towels or a different lunch. And you guys, you just took 20 minutes to get here. No. So uh, you, did you feel like you're in that football huddle calling that audible? <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. At that point I was talking about I was like, geez, can we get a different lunch mix of hamburger or something instead of soup and a, a, cu a crouton and a cucumber? Good lordy. Oh my God. Uh, so, uh, yeah, fire away with your questions. Go ahead. So, so you, you come back from all this, and, and you, I've known you for the seven, eight years, and you've always been a positive guy, positive outlook. How do you get more positive after this experience? That, you know, what was the was there a change in mindset, change in perspective? You were already Mister Positive. How yeah. much more positive could you be? Well, I'll be honest with you, dear. I, I can go very, very negative. So it's a conscious decision on my end uh, on, a, on a regular basis. Uh, my sarcasm is the way I, I deal with a lot of things, and some people perceive that as negative or, or, you know, sometimes it doesn't hit the mark. I go right. a little bit with the shotgun version of, of comedy. Uh, at some point, um, you know, one of them's going to make you laugh. I'll just try <laughs> a whole bunch of different jokes until I figure out what, what, what you find funny. Um, how I, a lot of people ask, how does, how has it changed me? Um, I, I definitely, I'll, I'll be honest, I, I definitely slow down. And uh, I mean, I used to work from 6 a.m. till, till nine o'clock at night and I never come home. And, uh, through this course of this scenario, every day I come home for lunch, uh, every day I say, I love you to, to Chrissy and Brent some way or shape or form. Um, that was not something I did in the past okay. I'm actually, I took for granted, but I figured, uh, you know, it was, it was kind of a, a tough guy mindset that, uh, you know, I was just going to, you know, I was just going to provide for the family and, and do as much as I could, uh, to make sure that everybody got what they wanted. And, and, and I would figure, figure out my side of it last. Um, uh, I probably don't go on as many vacations as I, I should, or or maybe I need to. I've been very fortunate to travel all over the world, and and uh, I, I, part of me, honestly, is uh, a staycation is, is just equally as fun to do stuff uh, <laughs> and, and watch uh, my daughter play lacrosse or soccer or basketball. Or uh, I mean, I've gone to your kids' practices more than I've gone to my kids' practice. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, Playing catch or uh, shooting a basketball, whatever, you know, kicking a soccer ball. <laughs> Those are things I make time for instead of yeah. fine time, you know, instead of fine time for now. Um, I, I try to uh, do more dinner dates with the wife. Um, relationships, as you know, are a two way street. She's very busy too. Mm -hmm. And we've had many conversations about that. Uh, we got to make time to enjoy. Um, and you, when you, uh, I'm, I own my own business. So a little bit of that is I have to make sure I, I take care of the business and the families that work within my business and the, 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 the men and ladies and that type of stuff. But, uh, a lot of times you're an employee and you work for somebody else. And, and, uh, sometimes you should ask them for a little bit of a break too, and, and say, I got to do things that, that are right, uh, in a bigger picture. Uh, yeah. don't worry about the small battle right now. Understand that there's a bigger, uh, well, how about this? You asked me, you kind of asked me what I was thinking about in the hospital. I 100% know for a fact I wasn't thinking about a faster car. Um, I wasn't thinking about uh, material possessions. Uh, I joke about the the bigger TV because it was in the hospital and it makes people laugh. <laughs> but I wasn't I wasn't worried about buying a hot tub or buying a fish tank or buy you know I was literally I was literally hoping to see uh, and working hard to see the next sunrise. Mm. That's free. Uh. So how has that changed me? Uh, I've always been up. I've always been an early riser, um, but I definitely like seeing the sunrise now. Good for you. Good for you. Does this get? I mean, you obviously the emotions are running high, and it's been two years, right? Yeah. Does this get any easier to tell? Uh, yeah. I used to be a train wreck. <laughs> I'm a <laughs> year old man crying on TV, and I don't care. 
<laughs> you know, some people are like, you know, you gotta be tough. <clears throat> um, you know, don't show emotions. I don't, I don't know if I believe that. I, I think, uh, some, did you believe that beforehand? Nah, you can ask your daughter. I've stood in the huddle and cried enough. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I've, I've shared this. I'll tell you the story. Uh, I, I, as you know, I, I work with teams for the majority of my career, 25 years in this field. And, uh, I've, I've been very, very fortunate to work with uh, Super Bowl winners and, and World Series champions and uh, 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 Olympic gold medals and world record record holders. And I mean, I can go, I can give you a list of first round draft picks, number one draft picks twice, two different sports. I mean, uh, and then I've worked with people who have never got a chance to play and they've worked equally as hard, if not harder, and they just didn't have the athletic talent. They never saw the field. Uh, so it runs the gamut, right? Um, uh I had no idea what I was going to say right there. You said what you were thinking in the hospital. You said you, I made you I made you think of something you were thinking in the hospital. Yeah, I completely whiffed. I apologize. I forgot what I was going to say there. Um, because I was talking about does this get any easier to tell the oh, story? Um, I don't. I don't think it gets any easy is any easier. But I know the more times I tell it, the more chance I have to make an impact on somebody who's sitting there right now with something in their heart that they might get up at two thirty five tonight and go pee. And never see the next morning. Mm. So the more times I tell it, I'm hoping that the that one person themselves either hears it and calls a doc and gets stuff checked out, or if it ever does occur, <clears throat> Rob, if I lay back down being a hardo, lay back down in bed thinking that I pulled a muscle, you and I aren't talking this morning. Right, right. I could have laid back down thinking I pulled a muscle, and being as stubborn as I am, I could have went back to sleep and never woke up. I survived a 45 minute cardiac event where no blood was reaching my heart and i'm here to tell you about it so that's a miracle in and of itself do you believe you're a miracle nah the people of the miracles everybody including chrissy all the way to the doc that did the cast stuff everybody did what they were supposed to do that night perfectly mm. think about that there might have been 20 or 25 people that touched me that night and if any one of them does something incorrect or wrong they didn't, they didn't answer their phone call. Uh, Dr. Jeff didn't pick up the phone in the middle of the night. Uh, I mean, any one of them could have done something wrong and I wouldn't be here. They're the miracle. So you, you call I guess, uh, is there a term serendipity? Like at all, all the stars lined up. Yep. Yeah. I mean, you, 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 I'm, I'm assuming you believe God was looking out for you that night. Yeah. There's uh there's definitely something that was paying attention. Uh, whether you go back to Bryn's story about, uh, he said, I'd be okay. You know, he, he was just busy uh, or what, but um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I'm very fortunate to be a product of a lot of people doing the right things. Uh, think about the years those people had to go through, you know, certifications and tests and degrees and everything else and, and their own trials and sacrifices. Uh, so in that very instant, they knew exactly what to do without thinking to keep me here. That's insane. And don't be surprised if they tell your story, right? That we had this guy oh. come in and we sit, you know, you some, of and it, yeah. some of that. So uh, probably, probably about two weeks after this occurred, uh, I walked up to the fire station by, by walking. I'm telling you, I'm like slow. There's no muscle. Mass. I lost over 45 pounds in, in, in uh, about two weeks. Wow. Um, well, that, that's also what happens when you get croutons and one cucumber for lunch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, um, but uh, I walked up to the uh, fire station and actually met the the driver and the ladies that was in the back of the ambulance. And uh, I, when we turned around, and walked away. I, 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 I don't need anything. Uh, we bought them dinner and the whole that we got Texas or Texas Roadhouse uh, basically sponsored an entire dinner for the uh, uh, fire station for everybody that was that was even there. And, and yeah. uh, they were, it was very cool to be able to do that and say thank you. But we we. Said thank you to everybody and then left in our own, you know, we were there probably 15, 10, 15 minutes. So fast forward a year later, 12, 1, 22, uh, Chrissy, Brennan and I went over there again and said, thank you. We brought uh, other Texas Roadhouse dinner and, and coffee and a bunch of other stuff for them. And uh, I said, hey, you know, just curious. When we came back uh, and I got a chance to, to talk to the driver and the lady that was in the back again. And I said, when we came back a couple of weeks after this event, um, I'll, I'll be honest with you. It was kind of like you, you were like numb to me. I was like, is this, is this something you deal with so much that you don't know? And she goes, no, no, no. She goes, people that go through what you do don't come back. 
So when you walk through the door, we thought you were dead. Wow. <laughs> I agree with that. The people that were saving you were already thinking that you might not be coming back. They're going to do all this work not knowing the outcome. The outcome's not guaranteed. Wow. That's that's moving right there. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. Right? yeah. So there's people that are willing to sacrifice a ton. They don't know you. And the outcome is not guaranteed. And they're willing to they're, they're basically put their line, their their skill sets on, on, on display just to give you 1% chance of coming back. That's pretty intense. So, so what does that say? Does that say you need to give everything you can to get have a player, a sports guy, whatever, get 1% better? Uh, yeah, that, I mean, that's – I don't know if that makes I'd, sense I'd or hope, not. I'd hope, I'd hope that uh, no one ever described me as someone who gave any, anything less than whatever I got. I know that, but but I mean, they're giving everything they got. Yeah. You having a one percent chance. Yeah, I don't. I don't care if you're in sports. I don't care if you're in business. I don't care if you're in real estate. Uh, I don't care what profession you're you're in. But uh, I, I think you cheat yourself more if if you're not willing to be all in. Yeah. Uh, then you are cheating others. But as soon as someone else recognizes that you can give more, then it's your time to turn on and show them up. Yeah. Like yeah. like at some point you gotta raise your game or get out. Uh, yeah. And I've been doing that for years. Uh, there's, there's been, I'm not a great coach uh, the majority of times, uh, but hopefully I've been a really, really good coach a few times. And that's what people remember. Well, I know yeah. my kids love you. They love you dearly. Yeah. You know, and you've helped them out both. I mean, my yeah. son just came, you know, he had that, uh, I, I guess he had an injury some time yeah. ago and you had him come out and you helped him out a little bit. So, yeah. and my daughter, you work with her for four years. So uh, they very much appreciate you. Yeah. The, you know, I got to say this in, in a funny way, cause you're the jokester, you know, the irony of you visiting the fire station. Here's a guy who had a cardiac arrest and he's taking Texas roadhouse artery clogging <laughs> material to the yeah. fire department, yeah. the butter, the steak and the bread. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, I don't want this. You guys eat yeah. it. Uh, and, and, the, and the funny part, I'm sitting there like drooling over these things. I mean, I mean, one cucumber and a crouton. I mean, like this hospital visit is a killer, man. This is really. Cool. I mean, every, time, every time we have a salad, excuse me. Um, obviously, we have salad here quite a bit, uh, even before this, whatever. Um, but it's still the going joke. Like when we do salads, like if I, if you ever come over to the house, I'll put one cucumber and like one crouton and then Britt will be like, ah, it's like what dad had at the hospital. They only give him one. I was like, man, again, as expensive as this visit was, I can't get two croutons and three cucumbers. Come on, help the guy out here. So, That's so. funny. Hey, so Rob, I know we got to wrap this up here soon for you, but uh, like well, how much more chiseling do you think you got going on in your life? I mean, God, this, this is a great story. You're here to tell it. You're here to help other people, especially the stubborn men that don't want to, you know, share their feelings or don't want to go to the doctor because they're afraid to go. To, they're afraid that they're going to look weak if they go to the doctor for this cramp or that pool muscle, whatnot. You know, what, what what else you got going on that you can help people with here? You don't know yet. Yeah. I don't know. Well, uh, well, I'm in, I'm in, uh, like, I'm, I've already started counting. I'm in, I'm in year two of, of the second life. A lot of people say you have nine lives. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, I, I apologize for having sniffles on this uh, 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 interview here, um, but. Uh, this is the real world comedy of, of Rob and the life that I live at the moment when telling this story and the, <laughs> the therapy that exists. But um, I, I don't know what's coming down the road. And I, I don't I, uh, I don't ever think I look too far ahead. I try to live a little bit in the present and uh, and take advantage of that. Uh, I, I do believe that, um, uh, again, if you think positive thoughts, positive things happen, I think you do have to take advantage of any opportunity that comes your way. You've got to see it through to the end. And and uh, it's not finished until you figure you feel you feel that you ran its course. Um, not every endeavor is going to be uh, what we term a success, but you can learn from any endeavor uh, that you go and actually uh, pursue. Uh, you cannot learn from an endeavor that you don't, don't take advantage of. Uh, I, I do find um, connecting with people very, very important now. Uh, I, I've always been, a, 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 that's one of the, the strengths in our field. Uh, you know, people come into our facility and they see we have, we have custom equipment. You've been in there too, from the turf to the ceiling, uh, the speaker, excuse me, in the ceiling, everything is custom made for us. And uh, I always joke in presentations like, you know, what's the most impressive um, uh, piece of equipment that I have, a piece of, you know, a tool that I have here in our facility. And everyone's, you know, points at all the computers and all that. I'm like, no, 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 it's my phone. Because at any point I can call somebody with the answer. I, I don't have the answer. I, I don't know the answer to most of the questions that are that are in life or in fitness or in whatever. Uh, but I can call somebody who is an expert in that. And I think we need to connect with people um, more. I, I think uh, social media is good to a point. But at some point, you got to shake someone's hands. You got to look them in the eye. You got to tell them you love them. You got to tell them thank you. You got to learn from them. And when you learn from them, you got to move on to the next person. You got to kind of level up 
as far as the people uh, that can teach you. Um, and then you also got to give back. Uh, I, I spent a long time uh, t- taking on interns and, and uh, doing interviews and podcasts on my own and, and other ways, other platforms um, to try to give back because so many people help me. And I, I think if you start doing that enough times, you start, uh, you'll get good things start coming your way. And, and I'm not saying that because of, uh, you know, I'm, I'm trying to challenge someone to create their own podcast or to uh, go out and try to present for their, the industry that they're in. Uh, but, but you got to find ways to make positive impacts and, and not expect anything in return. Um, I think, uh, I think it's important to do uh, positive deeds and, and help the lives of others, uh, because, uh, life without others isn't very fun. Yeah, there you go. And you, you saw that right before your eyes, literally. Right. Right. And, and then uh, so it's like the whole Zig Ziglar quote says, help enough other people get what they want and you'll get what you want. Yeah. That's, yeah. That, uh, kind of kind of sums it up pretty good there i mean yeah i don't, I don't question i don't know if i ever do something with the intent of getting something back uh, to be honest with you i don't yeah. uh i mean think about my position my role in a, in a team setting is that uh if i do a really good job no one talks about me but if someone has a hamstring pull or an acl or, or concussion all of a sudden oh it's got to be uh, I'll, I'll take the heat for all the bad stuff i'll take it all bring it on me i'll take it all yeah when good things happen make sure that you get in front of that that tv screen and you boast about how well you're doing because that's what i'm gonna i'm gonna take uh that's what I'm going to appreciate the moment when you're when you're winning and you're being successful. Rob, man, I, I appreciate you being on here. If somebody wanted to get a hold of you, especially for your smarter train, smarter team training, how would they get a hold of you? Uh, well, I'll, I'll give you a, a new technology um, that uh, we use, which is kind of like an electronic business card. If they go to callcoachtaylor.com, <laughs> uh, they can actually upload um, my contacts uh, as far as uh, some videos, as far as what we do, scheduling information and that type of stuff right into their phone. Um, because the majority of us now live on our phone and, uh, and, and, and traditional business cards are antiquated. Um, same, same thing. We could put a QR code in the back of your business card, Rob. I know you do a great job with the uh, better than you think book. And I've told you several times about putting a, a flyer in there where they can you know connect your website through a QR code and, and uh, not just a URL, URL link, but uh, if someone types in coach, uh, call coach uh, they automatically download, um, our contact list or my contact directly to my phone and, and uh, they get a bunch of links and, and uh, additional information to our social media. Um, and it's that easy. That's awesome. Rob, look, I know we got to run here and I just, I appreciate you. Thank you for your vulnerability, your transparency, your emotion and your tears. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, I, I know there's a lot of, a lot of people might be hearing this went through some tissues today. Yeah. So, uh, you know, we clean that should be thanking you anyway. <laughs> <laughs> you have so a new, look- sponsor. new sponsor of the show. Chiseled, <laughs> Howard Mike. Out of my Kleenex. <laughs> Look, buddy, I appreciate you so much. And thank you for all you've done for my daughter, my son, and, and the kids you've all helped at the schools, not just our kids' schools, but there's several schools you helped. So I appreciate that. I know they appreciate you. And, and just seeing you still on your two feet now means the world to them. So thank you for being here, Rob. Appreciate it, my man. I know you're better than you think, and I know we will win together. <laughs> yes, we will. And uh, till next time, everybody, let's go get chiseled.